шановні захисники. Бути президентом. That video appears to show Zelensky calling for Ukrainians to surrender, but it was generated by artificial intelligence. It's now possible to pretty much make anyone look like they're saying whatever you want. Chris Meserol is a fellow and director of research at the Brookings Institution. Chris, welcome to the program. Welcome, thank you for having me. So explain real quick what a deep fake is and who can make one. Yeah, so a deep fake is kind of a digitally generated uh, image or video or even text. Um, uh, that looks and sounds uh, exactly like the real thing. So, and that um, increasingly, pretty much anyone can create these, whether it's a smartphone app or if you're a little bit more sophisticated, you can, you can kind of use a server to do it on your own. Um, but basically, we now have the ability, or anyone, more or less anyone with a bit of technical know-how, can now create a, an image or video or audio of anyone in the world that they have like any kind of prior digital video or audio of saying anything they want them to say which just creates a, a vast new kind of uh, landscape uh, and, and media environment that we now need to navigate, particularly in, in times of conflict. Well, we saw that Zelensky video that was a fake. What are some other examples of how deep fakes um, have been used in conflict or can be used? Um, so there's a, a wide array uh, of examples in which they can be used. One is obviously to create a, um, a deep fake of a, a, you know, a national leader uh, saying something in a time of crisis where you're trying to get that person to kind of uh, discourage their own supporters, things like that. Um, a few other examples that we we're also worried about, um, one is that it, it really makes it easy for states to automate propaganda at scale. So a couple of years ago, China actually created a deep fake news anchor. Um, uh, and I, you can imagine during a conflict, having an, an auto auto-generated kind of news anchor just pumping out kind of misinformation about a conflict in real time around the world in foreign languages um, could create some uh, real challenges. Uh, another kind of more targeted example um, would be um, a lot of uh, ways that we verify uh, who we are and information for kind of uh, highly sensitive uh, applications or services involves audio, right? So if I need to do something with my bank, for example, I might call in and they would ask me to kind of who I was, et cetera. With deepfake audio, you could create, um, even if all you had was just this video that we're kind of filming um, now, you could take that, get my voice and my voice signature and create like a digital replica of my voice and have it say whatever you want. And so you could call my bank or do something like that. Well, don't give people uh, ideas, I know, I know, Chris. this is terrible, I know. <laughs> but the problem is this has already happened. Like there are cases where this has actually already happened. Um, and in conflict, you can imagine a scenario where there's a commander out in the field, they get a call from their superior sounds exactly like their superior um, and uh, you know it turns out it wasn't it was it was a deep fake that was generated by their opponent so are there ways to find out if they're real can you is there a ways to authenticate them well so one of the challenges of deep fakes is that if there was a way that we could you know anytime we come up with an algorithm to detect what's a deep fake versus what's a real uh, audio or video file that technology can then get brought into the next generation of deep fakes because it actually makes it, it improves, the ability to detect them actually improves the ability to generate them. Uh, so in the short term, you might be able to do that, um, but in the long term, that's not really gonna be a solution to this problem. It's a very powerful technology. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, you, you write, I think it's, you say this quote, democratic governments will almost certainly consider generating and distributing deep fake content. Mm -hmm. because it's so useful in especially exactly. in conflicts so what are the ethical concerns there that, you know, that the United States might be generating this right that to us this is uh, probably the the most significant issue for democratic governments in particular on the one hand I don't think we want democratic governments to really kind of fight fire with fire which is to say I don't think we want democratic governments to create their own kind of uh, deep fake you know news anchor and, and propaganda kind of apparatus um, on the other hand, there are probably going to be times where you know, security officials, intelligence officials within democratic governments might want to use deep fakes um, uh, to kind of uh, influence the behavior of their opponent in certain ways. And, and an example would be, um, you know, in a kind of counterterrorism operation or in a, in a, you know, an operation in Ukraine to counter Russia, for example, um, security officials probably aren't going to be too concerned about the integrity of the, the uh, democratic kind of discourse uh, and the, if they feel like they can get an advantage by doing it they almost certainly will and I, I think that that begs the question of well how can they do that safely because I don't think we want a scenario where anyone in kind of in the US government or any democratic government 
uh, is just kind of creating these deep fake videos of you know high profile kind of characters on the on the other side, um, you know at will. That that could kind of that's a recipe for chaos, and I don't think we want that. So so the suggestion that that mm -hmm. there's a an international code of conduct mm -hmm. for deep fakes. Does that even, would that even work? I mean, why would you follow that? Uh, so I think that's a, it's a, it's a great question. Uh, I would say that um, a code of conduct is kind of a very voluntary commitment that different governments will make um, to establish best practices around um, how they're going to use these technologies. So it's not to say that these technologies would never be used. It's not to say that this code of conduct wouldn't be violated, but it establishes norms uh, so that, uh, uh, there's there's a bit of a cost, a reputational cost, or in some cases there could even be a legal cost to violating these these norms and standards around how something like deepfakes could be used. Um, it's kind of a, a, a pact among allies not to kind of uh, get too carried away with how this technology might be used and implemented. And not to add to the fears, but there's also the fear that authentic content gets mm -hmm. dismissed as deepfakes as this proliferates, and democracies depend on people believing real information. Exactly. So this is kind of the, you know, this is the the exact reason why we don't want democratic governments to go overboard with this technology um, because once deep fakes are out there if they're being really widely used, then let's say you have a, a you know, let's say it's a presidential campaign and there's uh, a video of a, one of the campaigners uh, or nominees for example saying something a little bit outrageous that might kind of get them in trouble. Um, we actually if that's a real video, we want people to trust that it's a real video, right? And, you know, we're heading towards a future where they could say, in theory, oh, that wasn't actually real. That was a deep fake. Yep. I didn't actually do that. That's um, fake. And yep. I, I think that makes it very difficult for us to have a robust kind of, uh, uh, you know, discourse with, with, you know, that has the integrity that we want it to have that can produce the kind of democratic, you know, elections and uh, uh, processes that we want to have. All right. Well, Chris, thank you very much for being on the program. Well, thank you very much for having me. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.